This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. We're now going to go through and introduce working capital. Uh, what we've seen already is we've seen how to prepare a cash flow forecast. Uh, we've seen how to invest surplus funds for the short term. We've seen how to finance a short term cash deficit. We now begin to look at the, the overall level of liquidity, the overall ability of a business to pay off its debt as it falls due. And that's essentially looking at working capital because working capital is essential if a business is to function on a day to day basis. It's like a merry go round, a ride that you have at the fairground. OK, you get on, you go round and round and round and round until ultimately you come off at the end. OK, and it's all about starting the ride at the start and making sure that it can continue going round and round and round and round and round for as long as is physically possible. What do we mean by that? Well, when you start up your business, you need to go through there and buy some goods on credit, don't we? So we buy the goods on credit. I've got my inventory and I owe my supplier some money. I then sell those goods, hopefully as quick as possible. Again, I will sell them on credit. And then once they've been sold, on credit, I can then go through and get the cash back from the customer. Once I finally got the cash back from the customer, I can then go through, can't I, and pay off my supplier. Once my supplier is happy that I am able to pay them on time, I can then go through and purchase more goods from them. And the more and more goods I purchase from them, the more and more I can then sell, the more and more I can then generate a profit. But the key bit here is not focusing on profitability, it's focusing upon cash flow, being able to get the cash in from your credit customers on a timely basis to ensure that we pay off the suppliers as and when necessary. If we can't pay off the suppliers, then we are not deemed to be liquid, are we? Okay, so what we need to do is we need to ensure that we have a sufficient level of current assets within our business to be able to fund or pay off the level of liabilities, i.e. the payables that we have within our business. And the difference that we have between current assets and current liabilities is referred to as working capital. OK, so working capital is there as your current assets, less current liabilities. Current assets are your inventory and receivables. That's what makes the business operate. And then to keep it operating uh, so that you don't come off the merry-go-round, you have to make sure there that you pay off your suppliers as and when they fall due. OK, that ability to pay off your debts as and when they fall due is referred to as your liquidity. And in an ideal world, what you would want to go through and do is you would want to go through there and maintain a working capital surplus. Yeah, you want more current assets than current liabilities uh, to ensure that if there are, if you like, deficiencies that arise in terms of the collection, that there is still enough working capital or current assets elsewhere in the business to pay off your suppliers. OK, key bit, however, just be careful. You have to be very, very industry specific because the level of working capital varies from one entity to another. OK, you know, if we go through there and think about the supermarket industry, now, the supermarket industry buys goods, sells goods, and hopefully should be doing that very, 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 very quickly, shouldn't they? Yeah, because you don't want to be going to the shop and buying cheese and milk that, that, and bread that went off days ago. OK, so when you've got, if you like, a short sales or a short production cycle, then that business generally has a much lower level of working capital okay? because they don't have a huge volume of inventory, do they? Because that inventory is very perishable. OK, uh, however, if you then change that up to a business that has a much longer working capital cycle. So like it mentions the heavy engineering or manufacturing compared to supermarkets, uh, that has a lot higher level of inventory, doesn't it? Because it takes much longer to construct the asset to be able to go through there and sell it. Plus, as well, you're probably going to offer the sales that you make on credit as opposed to just cash that you see within the supermarket. OK, so that increases the level of receivables. We've also got an increased level of inventory is that the goods are subject to a process with regards to the manufacturing or the construction. So you have a much higher level of working capital in a heavy engineering business. OK, so it's really important that you appreciate that fact. 
Because what you need to do is you need to go through there and think about the right amount of working capital to have for your business. And unless you know the business cycle and how it operates, that would be very difficult to do within practice. From an exam perspective, we just need to think about the, the three aspects that you have for working capital. First of all, you need to manage your inventory. You need to make sure that you have a, a level of inventory that meets your customer's demand. So that if the customer places an order, you can fulfill that order and therefore not damage your customer or your business reputation. However, the issue that you have is in order to do that, you need to have fairly high or robust levels of inventory. And the problem there is that that can be quite costly, can't it? So you've really got to, to manage the level of inventory to, to suit your business needs. If you go through there and look at your cash, from your credit customers, so thinking there about your receivables, you need to make sure that you have a good credit control policy in place, because if you have a good credit control policy in place, that will ensure that you collect the cash in quicker. And the quicker that you collect the cash in, you want to ensure that the risk of irrecoverable debts is kept to a minimum, because if you start generating more and more credit sales and are not able to collect the money in, there's a bigger risk of irrecoverable debts and you have a reduction in your ability to get the cash and also a reduction in, in, in the level of profitability. You know, working capital management is all about striking up a right balance between profitability and working capital. OK, if you like cash, if you're going through there looking at your credit suppliers, uh, you need to make sure that your payments are done on a regular basis. Because if you don't make the payments on a regular basis, you could lose supplier goodwill. You know, that's one of the key issues, isn't it? If you don't pay your supplier on time, they refuse to supply you. If they refuse to supply you, you can't make any more sales. And then you upset your customers when they come to place an order and you have no goods in stock. OK, so that's the management. And it's all about finally balancing the management between inventory receivables and your payables. So what you've got to go through and do that is you need to think about whether or not you're going to have a high level or a low level of working capital. High level, meaning that we have lots and lots and lots and lots of inventory, lots of receivables and plenty of cash. OK, the issue that you have there is that it's great is because that means you can be quite flexible in terms of changes in the business environment. But the problem that you have there is that that can be quite expensive. The reason why it would be expensive is because on your inventory, you're going to have lots of holding costs. If you're holding lots of receivables, you have the, the risk is it of irrecoverable debts. And if you think about your cash, now if you've just got cash swilling around the business, it's not generating any interest, is it? So that, if you like, reduces the profitability of your business. So high levels of working capital tend to go through there and lead to reduced profitability. OK, uh, low levels of working capital usually result in, in higher levels of profitability because you have, if you like, less costs with regard to the business, so less holding costs, less risk of irrecoverable debts, the cash is being used and it's being generated profit uh, by investing it and, and earning interest. But the issue that you've got there is you've got a high level of profits, but if, if the business environment changes, then you are going to struggle to adapt to those changes. So when you have there, if you like, a low level of working capital, it's higher profitability, but if you like, there isn't an increased risk is in that if you like of maybe default or increased risk of, of, of illiquidity okay whereby if we're looking at a high level of working capital that's looking there isn't it a much lower level of risk within the business but lower risk means lower return doesn't it and the return here it is talking there about your profitability okay so how would a business be influenced with regard to, to the level of working capital that it has well its policy is one of two we'll introduce another one as we go along but you can have what's referred to as a conservative policy or an aggressive policy okay 
uh, an aggressive policy is whereby you have, if you like, high levels of working capital to try and reduce the risk. OK, so high levels of finished goods, allowing your customers longer credit periods than what you would normally do. Uh, and you pay your suppliers promptly to ensure that you do not run the risk of losing your supplier goodwill. The problem that you have there is, as we've said, that there is increased expenses, increased profitability. Uh, and the problem there is cash flow issues. If you keep paying your suppliers and you're not getting the cash in from your customers, where's the cash coming from? OK, uh, so you could end up with your, some cash flow issues. If you're looking at an aggressive method, that's going through there and adding a bit more risk. OK, but by taking on more risk. You increase your profitability, so reducing the inventory, improve credit control and delaying the payment of supply. It's not too long that, that you run the risk of upsetting the supplier and losing your supplier goodwill. But OK, uh, increased profitability. Great. Uh, but you've got the, if you like it, an increased risk. So what we need to go through and do there is we think then, well, you've got your working capital policy in terms of conservative and aggressive. How do we go through there and finance it? OK, so what we've got there is you've got the, the, the two methods. If I can just squeeze it in. There we have it just about chops the top off ever so slightly. Uh, but you've got the we need to go through. Let's go back to the top, shall we? Probably easier. Uh, yeah, keep it simple. Uh, the financing of working capital. You can either finance your working capital via short term funds. So like we've seen in F1, uh, utilising your payables, utilising an overdraft, uh, utilising maybe a short term bank loan or maybe your debt factoring. Or you can go there with, with your long term financing, which is something you see more of within F2. Yeah, the focus here is on the short term. So what we need to think about there is what level of short term finance are we going to use to fund our assets within the business? And the assets that you have are either your permanent or fluctuating current assets. Ignore the non-current assets for the time being. Non-current assets are usually funded by long term finance, aren't they? OK, yeah, it's ideal to match the financing up to, if you like, the, the, the level of debt or, the, or the, 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 the size of the asset. OK, long term finance for your non-current asset that you're going to use for a longer period of time within the business. Uh, when you're looking there at your current assets, however, you, we can split it out yet further into permanent. So that's keeping a core level of investment in terms of inventory and receivables. So if you like a, a buffer level of inventory that you keep just in case uh, there's an excess increase in demand. Uh, and then what you have there is your fluctuating current assets and, and the fluctuating current assets essentially are the changes in your receivables and payables, which will go up and down depending upon when you get the cash in from the customer and when you pay your supplier. OK, and you can see up there, there's, there's a little bit of a diagram, isn't there? Don't worry, you don't have to draw the diagram up within the exam. OK, uh, but it just shows there that you've got your permanent current assets and your fluctuating current assets. OK, uh, again, at the bottom, your non-current assets are funded by long term funds. Uh, your fluctuating current assets should be funded by, by short term funds, shouldn't they? Because as things fluctuate, you can address those needs on, on a day to day or on a monthly basis. OK, but but what about the permanent current assets? How are they funded? You know, they are there within the business for a longer period of time uh, than, than maybe some of the other current assets that you have. So your inventory are probably there for a bit longer than the receivables. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's a current asset. So should it be short term because it's current or should it be long term because it's there for, for a longer period of time? That's what you would need to go through there and decide. So what we've got there, and this is something you will, you will need to go through there and learn and apply it to any particular questions is if you have a conservative policy, OK, what you go through and do there is you're looking to reduce the level of risk, isn't it? So you have high level of inventory 
And what you're going to go through there and do is have higher levels, if you like, of receivables, lower level of your payables, isn't it? So to reduce the level of risk, what you go through and do there is you use more long term finance. Because with the long term finance, that's a little bit more certain, isn't it? OK, so, so what you've got there is with your long term finance. You would go through that. And for a conservative policy, you would fund, if you like, your, your working capital as such, so that you have a much lower level of short-term finance. Okay. Uh, the issue that you have there, however, is what happens whereby your fluctuating current assets reduce okay uh you know you, you you have got at least the buffer haven't you of having plenty of long-term finance okay so it's a little bit less risky isn't it however uh, long-term finance is a little bit more expensive isn't it key issue that you've got then is the other option is an aggressive policy so whereby we have more short term finance used. So long term finance still funds. The long term non current assets, it funds part of the permanent current assets and all of the fluctuating. So we have a lot more short term finance. Under an aggressive policy. OK. Uh, but the, the issue that you have there is that when you're, you're funding that short term finance is that if you have those cash shortfalls, then there is, if you like, an increased liquidity problem. However, although there is an increased liquidity problem, at least that short term finance that you have. Is cheaper and flexible, so, you know, it's all about using your overdraft. OK, to make sure there that if there are any short term deficits, then you can fund that short term fluctuation within your current assets. OK, the issue that you have there, if you adopt a conservative policy, uh, is that you have a lot of long term finance that's funding your fluctuating current assets. And at times it, it, it's not actually funding anything because you have enough fluctuating current assets. To fund the business on a day to day basis. So you have gone through and taken on more long term, more expensive finance uh, to, to fund your fluctuating current assets. OK, uh, there is no right answer in terms of what you choose. Uh, it's all about addressing the specific needs of your business in terms of objective test questions. You need to ensure that you understand what we mean by a conservative working capital or a conservative working capital financing policy, which is mostly using long term finance, whereby aggressive is mostly using short term finance, which gives an increased risk of liquidity. OK, uh, it does go on as well, doesn't it, to talk about moderate short term finance or, or moderate policy in terms of working capital. That's essentially in between your conservative and your aggressive. OK, halfway in between. So long term finance funds still all of your non current assets, but maybe a little bit more of the permanent current assets than you would have with your aggressive. OK, uh, there we go. That's working capital as an introduction. That's the financing aspect in terms of the policies that we have. Uh, what we'll do is we'll stop it there and then we'll go through there and start looking at how we begin to measure it in the next session.